Aloha everyone, Steve Scapes. Happy to be joining you from my new, soon to be fish room in New York. I'm kicking off my aquarium life here with a new series where I take you through the hands-on tips and techniques I've developed for my contest aquascapes. Welcome to the Master Skills series. We're kicking off the series with a feature on Echoes of the Pali, my 2023 work recreating Hawaii mountains, the power and strength of mountains graced by the touch of rain and breath of trade winds. That was my inspiration. This series is primarily going to focus on demonstrating hardscape technique by making miniature replicas in a 45 centimeter tank. If folks are interested in hearing more of the background on my thought and inspiration for the layout, leave me a comment below and we can make a video more similar to the old videos I've made on past works. Getting into the demonstration, we have here a 45 centimeter rimless tank from UNS. Thanks to Ultim Nature Systems for providing the materials to make this demonstration possible. When I skate my home aquariums, I usually start by doing two things. First, lay down a rubber sheet on the bottom of the tank, as well as a clear plastic sheet stuck to the inside front. Here, I'm specifically using clear window protector, a type of, you know, product you can attach to windows in order to protect them from impact and other accidents. We can't go far enough when trying to protect a nice tank like this, right? We are doing this specifically to protect the aquarium before we go into some intensive hardscaping. But uh, the clear plastic also has some incredible applications in hardscape planning. That's going to be in part two of the series. By the way, this type of plastic scraper is an incredible tool for leveling sand, for cleaning glass. There's a million applications. Next, I'm bringing out my secret weapon, waterproof duct tape. This serves two functions. First, blocking out unnecessary side reflections and also allowing me to attach rocks to the side of the aquarium itself, anchoring hardscape to the aquarium. This is tremendously advantageous and easy to use. It also protects the aquarium during the design. Of course, it won't be visible in a contest photo and the idea is to as much as possible cover tape surface with material. For now, we're also using it to map out the general layout of the design. Note that you can cut away pieces, you can add pieces as you go, cutting like with an X-Acto knife, being very careful not to scratch the glass. This will help you customize the overall layout of the aquarium. One thing to be careful of though when using duct tape, if using tape like this on the left or right side of the aquarium, you must bring it all the way to touching the front glass pane as I have done here. Now, if you're not careful on this point and we're really getting into the ornery, crazy competition aquascaper mindset here, but that's why you're here for the master skills series, right? Um, if you don't take care for this, it means that you're not blocking out the reflection. And in the case of attaching duct tape to the side of the aquarium, you're gonna get the white ugly side of the tape reflected in the glass. For folks who know anything about contest aquascapes, this is already making you cringe because so much of the skill uh, is showing effective use of the reflections on the surface of the aquarium, on the sides of the aquarium. You wanna be able to show the judges that you're able to take that into consideration in creating a natural experience. White tape stuck to the side of the glass, it totally ruins that illusion. And it's also going to be ugly from you know, an in-person viewing experience when you see the aquarium from the front. So in order to avoid that, actually anytime you're trying to allow hardscape to touch glass directly, you want to put a black material in between the hardscape and the glass. Uh, not black facing in like the duct tape here, but black facing out. So like if you have black sponge or you have um, black filter floss, if you shove that in between 
rock and glass or wood and glass that's like making a base of the aquarium um, then you won't get any ugly reflections and you'll be able to protect the glass here though i'm trying to use the tape as an anchor for hardscape and so what i'll do is use double-sided black plumbing or construction tape this works exactly the same as duct tape but it's a lot more expensive and it can be more annoying to clean up afterwards. That's why I only use it when I need to. If for whatever reason, I'm duct taping in a place that isn't on the back side of the aquarium, if I'm taping on the left or right and not bringing it all the way to the front, then and only then will I bust out my double-sided black you know, construction tape. But having both of these types together means complete freedom. Inventing this technique dramatically enabled me to quickly and efficiently uh, put together hardscapes like this. The next step is pretty standard technique. I'm placing the most important rocks and attaching them to the scape. I like to use toilet paper and super glue as main glue go-to. Here, apologies that I lack the foresight to order thin glue in advance. Uh, don't be lazy like me. So. I am having to use only gel type glue with a plastic knife as a tool for laying glue on and smearing it around. In a massive 120 centimeter tank where you have all sorts of situations come up in hardscaping, you'll want both types, both thick and thin, on hand constantly ready for different situations. Creating the base of the scape is the most critical step and being sure to glue each rock in 3, 4, 5, 8, 20 places. <laughs> I'm just joking. But the point is, there's never such thing as too much um, insurance here. So with the base built, we move on to the next stage of the aquascape and the next secret weapon, a giant bag of UNS soil. Doesn't have to be powder tight like this, but certainly powder tight makes the next step faster. A lot of folks have been asking me how I got the seamless edges in the scape. This is how. We're going to make a putty with mud. It's the soil combined with lava gravel for the texture. How? A bit of inspiration from binging too much food too. Mortar and pestle and arm work. We're gonna put the materials in with a bit of water then start pounding and pounding and pounding and pounding and no food processor can save us here. Then we're gonna mix in a bit of black silicone in order to get some, you know, strength holding the mud together. Nothing that says anti-mold on the label. Aquarium safe, terrarium safe, all that's good. I couldn't find any at a home center, but found it readily on Amazon. I then squeeze the mud, gravel, silicone mix into a pliable putty. From here, we can go in and start making our mountain ridges. Freely, we can connect stone and make details. We can even cover tape and super glue seams or white patches burned by the glue. There's a lot of freedom here to build and fix the aesthetic. Note that there are some kinds of details like the expression of stone that cannot be recreated with this putty. For the purpose of demonstration, I'm doing it primarily for this scape, but in the original, I had a lot of materials on hand. Uh, fragments of Sansui style plate lava, chunks of, you know, really ragged lava rock, big stones, small stones. The point is that there is a part of real material expression that cannot be created by a technique like this. Really large stones especially have their own presence, their own aura. It's irreplaceable. Uh, don't find yourself relying on this type of technique. Where possible, try to harness the real face of unaltered materials from nature. So here's where we ended up after the first day of scaping. What do you think? Now, when this dries, it'll form a hard mud structure. However, at this state, it's still easy to break and very thirsty. We're gonna feed that thirst with super thin super glue. I finally bought some after. After the super glue is sucked into the mud, it'll form a tough rock-like surface that's not easy to break and quite resistant against water. I never had any issues with my hardscape melting or dissolving for the length of the scape.
So with the hard skate done, we can polish things up. I'm going to fill any holes with sponge and then put in the substrate, both the powder UNS in back and decorative sand in front. And here we go, the final layout for the first of the Master Skill Series demonstrations. Now, I wanna keep iterating this. We went over a lot of technique today, but the real aquascaping ability is not going out and trying to ask how, 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 how to get the tips and tricks that masters have created. The real ability is having the determination and the imagination to go out and discover it on your own. To know that nothing is gonna stand between me and my vision and I'm gonna figure it out. For all the works I've created up until now, every time I've had to make something new. It builds and builds and builds with each layout, but every time, new problem for a new vision, how do I figure it out on my own? And that is what unlocks real creativity. That said, if you like this deep dive, please like, comment, subscribe, and tune in for the next edition of the Master Skill Series. Next time, we talk about the skills for planning and building such a layout. And in future vids, we'll demonstrate the techniques I developed and featured in previous works. With UNS's support, I can get any type of rock or wood I need to demonstrate, recreate any of my old works. What layout would you like to see me feature next? Please leave me a comment and let me know. Until then, take it easy.